Welcome to ADH Derbcast with Stephen and Harv. Wuggle, 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 woo! Welcome to ADH Derbcast. <laughs> okay. That was like you were like fully drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, uh, my brain is all over the place. And uh, yeah, so let's go again. Welcome to ADH Derbcast. I am Stephen. You are Harv. We are Sometime. both. Sometimes you're Harv. Um, our brains are both not fully connected and not working the way they should. We've just spent an hour playing with things that we weren't supposed to do and completely messed up our episode plan. So here we are, and we're just going to see where the wind takes us because that is probably the perfect analogy for ADHD. How are you? Okay. And I'm how saying, how are you, to pretend that like we haven't just been talking for literally the last hour oh, when we were supposed to be recording for that last hour. Um, well, it's okay. just as bad as the time that we recorded an episode and forgot to record it. Did we forget to record it? Yep, there was one episode we forgot to press record. But we we had like the we had the video, but not the audio or something. We had the audio, we but had not the, video. the audio recorded directly, but we didn't have video. Yeah, yeah. Um, we still, I don't think we've used that yet. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. I uh, well, can we 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 need a segment? That's what we need. We need a segment. What's wrong with Harv this week? A segment. <laughs> a team tune. Do I have any team tunes on the show? What's wrong with Harv? Oh man, I wish I had some bloody stuff set up on this thing now. I just gave you one there. That was gold. We need to start using this stuff. Cause it's so funny. Except we got feedback to not. Yeah, remember. but we also got feedback too as well. Oh, I hate people. Who are you supposed like when you're a people pleaser? Who are you supposed to listen to that? You can't hear that actually, can you? No, I can't. God damn! If I can't, that oh, means wait. the great vast people can't either. Hang on. Don't mind me. We can edit a live example out. of a rabbit hole. We're not gonna. Yeah. We, we, okay. we say we can edit it out, but we're not gonna. How do I move this fucking thing? Don't say fuck. How do I move this inging thing? <laughs> I don't know. I can't see what you're doing. Why? So I'm trying to... I'm pressing the... the I'm pressing the sound effect things on the roadcaster. Yeah. But they're all muted. Why are they all muted? Oh, yeah. Um, You have to assign them. Remember we ran it? You have to assign them to like the... The headphones or the mic or something? Because we no. remember you had the you had the monster voice assigned to your mic, to, but not to my one. And to use them, you have to assign you have to assign what way the sound is going to come out or something. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I think I think it's actually not that, but okay. I know what you mean. <laughs> Well, you helped me to figure out what the actual problem was. Well, that's good. I'm glad that was so useful. Broken okay. response got you to where you needed to be. Good work, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, so, okay. yeah, now we've used that. We're probably never going to use it again. I'll completely but, uh, forget we have it. Yeah, same here. Um, so, yeah, what's wrong with her? Oh god, <laughs> I forgot that's how we got to there. <laughs> um, I'm I'm currently dying with a, a throat infection and an ear infection, so antibiotics, painkillers, eardrops, um, just completely run down, which isn't helpful <laughs> with uh, the with the situation with the meds as well. So nah, at least I don't have anything crazy going on. So I'm happy that's about true. that. But I'm feeling this, good, I'm feeling positive, and I'm feeling kind of, uh, you know, optimistic about everything, so. In terms of things wrong with her, that's actually fairly low level. Um, yeah. It's just like, ah, you've got a bit of an ailment, you've got a bit of a, a sore throat, and it's something that flat sound up won't fix. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've also learned that when we're doing our eardrops, we don't send photos while we have droplets of milk in our beard. Rachel was like laughing at me, but any time I eat, have cereal, I don't eat cereal an awful lot because I'm not really much of a fan of milk anymore. But um, 
I always get milk in my beard, regardless of the situation or what I'm eating or whatever it is. Every single time there is milk in my beard from the get-go. And uh, <laughs> she came over to do my eardrops. Or I, I think I went over to her to do to do my eardrops and she's doing them. I have to tilt my head like completely sideways. She's like, what? Why is there milk in your beard? I'm like, there's always milk in my beard. It's just like common knowledge. I can't believe you've been my wife for, for this long and we've been together for 13 years and you don't know about milky beard. <laughs> but then no. stupidly, stupidly, Harvey sends the picture to Stephen saying, oh, I just got my eardrops uh, done and I feel like shit. And of course I have a milky beard and Stephen runs straight to his bedroom to enjoy that picture. It's it's firmly logged and lodged uh, in an image repository or bank of some <laughs> description, uh, we oh might say. Um, I got to show the picture here, but uh, I think what we should do is when this is being edited, I think we should have the picture on screen. For I don't think that's to, reasonable. I think, I think it's incredibly I think. I think that amounts to some some sort of abuse. Where's that HR? Fuck's sake. Milk. Um, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> That's a new level of uh, of of personal sharing now. I don't <laughs> oh um, my god. So yeah, that was that. That's what's wrong with her. Um, so. <laughs> Oh, what's, Jesus. Wrong, oh, what's wrong what's with Harvest? Uh, not a whole, much, a whole lot, actually. I keep taking on and off my glasses because, frankly, it's too warm in this bloody room to wear them. Um, I know glasses. So, you know, first thing I take off when I'm really, really warm. Leave the leave the hoodie on. Leave the big headphones on. You know, no glasses. No, that's too much. It's the because keep them they steam up. I know. For me, I like. It's all up around here. It just steams. And it's like, well, now I can't see fucking anything. Um, I got glasses when COVID hit. Like, literally just started having glasses. I think it was maybe just before. No, it was actually during COVID when I finally got the glasses. I think I did the test before COVID started. Yeah. And I got the glasses themselves after COVID had, had come in. And we were locked down. And, you know, you had to ma wear masks everywhere. But, uh, yeah, like, literally... Going into a shop and not being able to see anything. Like, <laughs> every time you have to take yeah. your glasses off. It was I impossible. Remember the way because your breath would be coming up the corners of the mask yeah. and like fogging up your glasses. I used to go around Excuse with me. my glasses like this. Yeah, the same here. Sorry. Or like you'd have to the glasses over the mask, like so. You'd have your. Uh, let's see if I have anything I can use. Yeah, I do. So you'd have your mask like that. And you'd have your glasses like that over the mask uh, to try and see something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, or that you actually, both me and Graham wear glasses. So that used to be the first test on the masks we'd buy would be like, how did they fuck up? But yeah, that was what's wrong with Stephen this week is that I have made some pharmacological decisions with my medical professionals. I was thinking for a long time because so basically to give the overall story i uh i was initially diagnosed with um gad or generalized anxiety disorder and um, following that i was diagnosed with um adhd sorry i forgot what the word was there um and i'm medicated for both the generalized anxiety disorder medication is ridiculously strong uh, it's really, 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 really good medication for what it does. Um, really helped me. And I went on that in 2020, I think it was. Um, fantastic medication, and it made a lot of difference to my life. But the side effects um, were aggressive, to say the least. Um, okay. The main, like, first of all, you have to do a load and dose, which lasts about six weeks because it takes a while to build up in your system. Um, it's different to ADHD, which has a very short half-life, which means it goes into your system and leaves your system in a really relatively short space of time. Yeah. Um, the medication for anxiety or SSRI, as they're called, serato selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, work in a different way and they take 
quite a while to build up and it, it affects it can, like when you're on it it can affect mood it can affect appetite um for me there were particular uh sexual dysfunction issues um at the start and there were some that can kind of continued on while i was on the medication that had to be dealt with, with my doctor and uh, but that's very very common and anyone who's on uh, SSRIs will be common with those side effects. It's yeah, a well, that's what well, I was going to ask well, that. Yeah. Was there yeah. like, was that expected or was it well known, you know? Extremely well known. They're, like I've seen hundreds of TikToks. Uh, I'm sure you have. That I'm not going to elaborate on <laughs> about those particular uh, side effects. But it, yeah, it's very, very well known. That, that's Probably not issue. just TikToks, eh? Well, the thing is, you wouldn't be looking at adult entertainment with uh with with that particular subject matter because a lot of times um any that kind of desire can completely disappear and that's one of the side effects okay. um it's very very common that all sexual desire just gone um but you're not stressed about going to the shop anymore so you know it swings around a bit <laughs> um, yeah 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 but no, I consulted with my doctor about it and the pros very much outweighed the cons and yeah. the cons were mitigated in other ways and things like that. And that's like, it's its whole own subject. And it's one of the ones I kind of want to discuss on if I do a solo video, because it's a very common one and it's one that people don't talk about very openly. Yeah. Uh, like those side effects are like, there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of stigma around those side effects. Um, but it's the side effects are caused by a medication, but so yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. feel there should be a shame. So I try and talk about it openly. In fact, with like I've talked about it openly with you off air and with our fellow ADHD or Stephen Daly. Um, I try and Shall talk as deal. openly as possible. <laughs> um, I try and talk as openly as I can to try and destigmatize those things. But yeah, and it's that's that's not easy. I can tell you now. If I was going through some stuff like that, I would find it very, very difficult to uh, to talk about stuff like that. Um, now, um, having said that, we can talk it's... about other things that I did find very difficult to talk yeah. about later down the line. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll come back to that. But um, I'm going to actually write that down. That's going to be the first thing that's going to be new this time. Uh, I can find the whiteboard. Come back to her difficult this will probably not be edited out difficult talking there we go um okay so i was yeah i try and destigmatize that as best i can uh now, and that's as you said it's not easy to do that that's not just a switch you turn on and off in your brain to go oh i'm just going to be okay about talking about this now i yeah. went on this medication in 2020 um, and went through quite a personal journey of realizing what that meant for me, what it meant for my life, all that kind of stuff. And it's now 2024 and I'm trying to talk about it openly. Um, I am, but I've now made the decision that what if the anxiety symptoms that I'm experiencing are also connected with ADHD? So I talked to, again, medical professionals and we decided, let's give it a go. So let's try and come off the SSRI that mm -hmm. I'm on and see if the ADHD medication manages it and helps it out and like kind of covers the anxiety side yeah. of things because my anxiety is chronic when I'm not on medication. Um, like I'm even the fact that thinking to to even explore that like how did you explore coming off it or, or yeah um there was um let's say that that event <laughs> is related to the sexual dysfunction stuff okay uh, and we'll leave it there um, okay, okay this would be the kind of thing if we ever decided to do something like patreon episodes that will be a topic we discuss on the Patreon episode. Okay. Uh, and Fair we'll enough. leave it there. Um, but yeah, there, there was there was a watershed moment, let's say, or lack of watershed moment would probably be a better way of saying it. Um, just in case people can't glean the meaning from that. 
Um, but yeah, so I consulted with medical professionals. We decided that uh, we were going to try and wean me off. Now, the process to wean off the medication, because it's not like Ritalin, which you found out through upsy downsies that you could just come off it on a day's notice. Uh, and there's no, while there is withdrawal and there is side effects, there's no actual withdrawal per se. Um, yeah. It leaves your body that same day. But with SSRIs, if you come off it, because your brain essentially becomes dependent on it because it's working directly with brain chemistry and all things that I don't understand. Um, we don't, we need, we need to talk to a pharmacist. We need to talk to a pharmacist on well, an episode. As luck would have it, we have a pharmacist lined up to come don't on. Don't give soon. away too much. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying we have a pharmacist waiting in the wings for when we get our shit together to actually organize to have them come on and have a chat. Um, so yeah. definitely we, we will uh, talk about that. So that you mentioned, very... yeah, you, you mentioned SSRI, right? Serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Yeah. Okay. So it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin selectively. Yeah. So essentially, um, serotonin gets reused in the brain. Now, this is a super, super layman version of that. Yeah. Um, it gets reuptaken into the brain. It gets reused. And as far as I understand it, that, that makes it less effective. So this medication blocks that from happening. So it forces the brain to, like, make more, I imagine. So you get fresh serotonin. Okay. Interesting. I think I'm probably yeah. very, very wrong. But that makes my brain able to understand it. Not, so Yeah, not not important. So the yeah. fact that it works is the important part. But exactly. Yeah, interesting. Um, I like stuff like that. You know, I like to understand how things work. So that'll definitely be an interesting conversation to have. Even if I understand it wrong, but it allows me to understand it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So the weaning process for an SSRI isn't in a matter of days. It's done typically in weeks and months. Yeah. So I'm in a phase now. So it's going to be six to eight weeks before I'm actually off it. Um, I was on a full tablet a day. Uh, I'm now on half a tablet a day. And after two weeks, that's going to down to um, half a tablet every two days. And then it's going to be half a tablet a couple of times a week and then it's going to be if i feel like i need it kind of thing and then eventually just stop yeah. um and i guess with such a structured regimen of uh reduction of the medication there's probably like really well documented expectations for each stage or something like that right to a degree um yeah. with the one i'm on um which is escitalopram or commonly known as lexapro um that's the one I'm on. And there are some very common withdrawal side effects. So, and it's known, it's very well documented. So one of the first ones is digestive discomfort. Um, and I basically, I messaged you a couple of times <laughs> while we were like supposed to be recording or planning things. And I was like, can't because I'm like a busted fire hydrant. Um, from places <laughs> where I shouldn't be. <laughs> um, and that w was happening for a few days. So I felt like I had a stomach bug, but yeah, yeah, yeah. without any physical like discomfort or pain or anything like that, I was just, water was coming in, water was going out. Yeah. Um, so that was a few days. There's been a few, like I've been really, really tired. Um, I'm only I'm only off it like not off it, but I've only reduced it for like four four or five days now. Um, okay. but the symptoms are pretty harsh. Uh, and have you noticed any difference in the anxiety? Not not majorly per se. Um, I haven't noticed any increase in anxiety. I've not have noticed a bit of like unease, but that's because I'm going through physical symptoms. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm uneasy about that i don't feel any less or any more anxious should i say i don't feel any less at peace with myself you know okay. um than when i started this 
um, there's a couple of there's, I've already noticed some increases in the unmentionables um, that have been quite nice let's say <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I was coming along with you there <laughs> for that conversation. Oh, I know you were. <laughs> it was quite nice. We've uh, we've seen the the milk photo. We know you were coming along with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, so yeah, no, it's been it's currently being a journey, should I say? Um, Graham is on high alert because the pharmacist even said you're probably not going to be able to see the uneasiness and the antsiness he'll mm-hmm. be the person that sees that um okay. and there have been there, were, there was actually it wasn't an argument but there was a tense discussion yesterday i think it was where there was a miscommunication and the that mis- miscommunication would have happened when i was off medication and it would have been a massive flare-up it would have been a huge blow up um and he assumed it was happening and responded as if it was happening. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where the fuck is this coming from? And he was like, yeah. oh, I thought you were going down this road. Carry on, all's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was weird because that would have normally been a major situation and it just wasn't. Um, yeah. So I think he was almost kind of expecting that mm. he was going to see a massive increase in the way I used to be. Um, and he didn't, so that's nice. But it that's, again, it's an ongoing thing. It's still fairly early days. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. So, so far, it's looking nice. I think the, while I'm a big advocate for pharmacological solutions to these problems, and I think they work, and I don't think they should be discouraged, I yeah. also think that if you can operate at your optimal without them, then you don't need them. So they're great for what they're great for, but if you don't need them, you don't need them. So yeah. Yeah, if I don't need them, I'll be very happy. Yeah, it doesn't even need to be your optimal. Like if you can operate at a level that you're happy with. Um, yeah, that's you know probably a better way to say it. Um, I, I, I think I'd be quite similar in that sense. You know, like when, when I was first diagnosed with ADHD, even before I was diagnosed, I went into the process saying, I don't want to take med- medication for it. I want to understand what the problems are and how I can fix them in a kind of, you know, metho- methodical data driven way. <clears throat> this is how, how I'm affected by it. These are the things that I can put in place to fix them. <clears throat> and as we spoke about before, I went through the uh, psychological exam, um, exam, psychological assessment, assessment first. Um, and got all of those tools and resources and they did SFA to help me with the things that I needed help with. So then obviously I looked into the medication and um, it was life changing. You know, I can't, I can't explain how life changing it was to go from what I was to what I became on the medication. Um, And before I started it, couldn't comprehend how people could say it was life changing, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a very difficult thing to be able to articulate to people how much your life changes, even yeah. though the, the changes are so tiny, they're so tiny and so minuscule, you might not even notice them, you know, as you're going through these processes um, or you're going, you're, you're doing the titration process, you're changing medications, you're doing those experiment experiments with different medications or whatever. And it gets to a point where you're almost like just a completely different person. You're still you, your personality yeah. hasn't changed, but your effectiveness, your productivity, your awareness, all of these different aspects of your life have been amplified to a degree where you're like at the baseline of everybody else who doesn't have ADHD. And it's mind blown to be like, how have, how do people live like this for the whole lives? Yeah, when you're looking at it from the outside, like so, yeah. Now, one thing I will say um, is because we've talked a lot about you like dive bombing into demedication again, true, no, no choice of your own, um, and how it's affected you and how it's like <clears throat> affected your productivity and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, one thing I've noticed lately is you're starting to level back out again. 
Yeah. You're, it's like you're over the shock and you, you're starting to re-implement the coping skills that you had before medication, but you're implementing them with this new knowledge of ADHD. So you're able to, sorry, excuse me. You're able to bolster them or strengthen them. Yeah. I feel and... like that's probably what it looks like from the outside. But <laughs> from behind the curtain, none of that. You feel like a snap on. Yeah. Yeah. No, none. I can see, even sitting here having this conversation, I can yeah. see and feel the difference from the last two, three weeks. You know, we've had conversations, even being able to come into the office and tidy up and get stuff ready for today. You know, um, yeah. that's very different to how it was the last few weeks. But I'm not sure if we mentioned this. I had a conversation with my pharmacist. Um, and asked her, you know, is there anything that can help me? You know, my energy levels are completely shot. My brain fog is through the roof. My fatigue is through the roof. Is there anything you'd recommend? And, and she kind of put it to me that this is like, this is because you're coming off the medication. This isn't, yeah. you know, the baseline that you had before you started the medication, which I thought that it was like i've no medication now i'm back to what i was like before but obviously i wasn't because i'm able to uh, well i was able to do things <laughs> before yeah. i had medication and for the first two or th two or three weeks after i was uh, taken off the medication i couldn't do anything you know i was literally a potato and we spoke about it we discussed it and um, you're well aware and rachel's well aware um but it was but really i was actually i was thinking something uh, mm. that we discussed on a previous episode where we were talking about how I had severe withdrawal when I wasn't able to access Ritalin for a week. Yeah. And you were like, oh, that doesn't happen to me because I, uh, I, I take it as needed. So I don't actually take it every day. So I don't think I'd go through withdrawal. Eh, wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I think we've learned now that yeah, like what you experienced with that complete crash is what I experienced yeah. that week. I just had physical symptoms along with it because that's how my body deals with things. Yeah. So know? like the first time that I kind of came off the Ritalin, we were going away for the weekend or whatever it was, and I wanted to be able to have a drink and relax. Yeah. Uh, but I was on quite a low dose. I think it was probably on fifteen milligrams twice a day or whatever it was. And I came off it for a week or so at that stage. And, you know, I didn't have any major uh, side effects. But also, I wasn't in the middle of, you know, the, the most stressful week of a master's. I didn't have any active interviews that I was really stressing out preparing for. Um, I didn't have a baby on the way. All this kind of stuff. I didn't have a podcast to try and run. All these kind of things, you know, none of that was there. And... At this stage now, when I come off it, I was on 30 milligrams twice a day, mostly religiously because I had so much stuff to do. I needed the productivity yeah. to be able to spend 10 hours in the office um, working on assignments and studying and stuff like that. So the the difference is quite stark, you know, from what I experienced initially yeah. um, compared to most recently. But even still, I do where I had been taking a day off here or, you know, a couple of days off, but because I wasn't hitting that threshold or whatever of, you know, letting it all come out of my system or not having that productivity for three or four days, because it was really the third day where I started that fatigue drop off a cliff. Like, yeah. So yeah. And it hits so hard. It's crazy. I just literally like, I've never felt more useless in my life. <laughs> So you're going to be having, well, where are we now? We're the 13th. Um, we, you're going to be having a consultation with your doctor close to the end of the month. And by that stage, I am going to be further along <laughs> on my weaning process. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how we're working together then. Where will you be able to go back on Ritalin? Will I be an anxious mess? Will you be an anxious mess? And will this all just crumble into nothingness? Can yeah, I find think, out. I think, like you say, I'm starting to level out now. And even yeah. though I'm kind of under the weather with the other stuff, I've like, I'm I'm kind of hitting intermittent walls throughout the day. Yeah. So I've been napping during the day. I've been falling asleep earlier in the evening, but um. I uh, I definitely feel more kind of on than I had yeah. 
for the previous couple of weeks, even though I'm a little bit under the weather now. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that the trajectory of that is kind of going to go up a little bit more and I'll probably get back to how I was just before I started the meds, which was, you know, reasonably able to human. <laughs> now, one thing I will say about that as well, like I've known you for 12-ish years now um, and known you before. You were saying there, like as you've been going through the day, you've been hitting those walls. Before you were on medication, if you hit one of those walls, that was you down for the day and sometimes several days. Whereas today alone, you've powered through a few of those. Mm. And that's probably something that you didn't even notice yourself. No, I didn't. Yeah. If you hit one of those walls before you were on medication, that would have been you done. But life is very different now as well. I don't have the the luxury of being able to sit down by a wall an awful lot of the time. (laughs) Um, even still, even yeah. though life is different, you're still responding to that difference, adapting and changing how you deal with things. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it definitely is different. I think even without the medication, I'm, I think I've grown an awful lot over the last year or so, um, which has probably helped an awful lot by the layoff and the conversations yeah. that I've had and the time I've had to myself. Um, I've definitely grown an awful lot in different aspects. So I feel like, um, things like that, definitely I can, I can look at them differently. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I think that's extremely healthy and it's probably like, these are the kind of aspects that are hard to reflect on you, like yourself, like you're not able to see those aspects. You're not able to be in the moment before you're on the medication because you probably fucking forgot uh, yeah. and how you are now and how the two things compare. So it takes someone on the outside to kind of help you reflect on those kind of things. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with this podcast as a whole. We're trying to help each other reflect, but with that, trying to help other people reflect because if we're yeah. going through these things, so are other people. And you mentioned, like, I probably forgot the stuff before the medication, yeah. which is kind of, you know, a bit mind blown when you think about it. But last night I was stressing out so bad going to sleep because I kept remembering things, just random memories. Like one thing popped into my head from Jesus, what was it? Just some random memory that, you know, I thought had been lost and it popped into my head. And then they started triggering more memories to pop up in my head, completely unrelated, like maybe years and years, like in between these events or whatever it is. And like five or six just random memories kind of in quick succession that I don't actually, that I hadn't remembered, you know, and nothing, nothing major, no major events, no, um, you know, no special situation or anything, just vivid vivid memories out of the blue and it stressed me out because i was like if i start remembering loads of these things i'm not going to be able to sleep for one but for two i'm probably going to start remembering things i don't want to remember um Fair. you know uh so that was really strange and i kind of i considered whether that was down to coming off the medication and like what would have triggered this kind of onslaught of random, strange memories, almost as if like a little treasure chest, dusty treasure chest had been wiped off and opened up and just these random kind of things started fluttering out, you know? Uh, It was so strange. It was really, really weird because I don't have any memories, like maybe five or six true memories. So to have so many different ones come back all of a sudden out of the blue was pretty crazy. I'm sure there's some sort of like neurochemical reason for why that would be triggered. And I, I will, my personal feeling for that would be that has to be linked to the medication or the fact that you're rebalancing after the medication. Yeah. So weird. That that was the first thought that came to my head, you know, because nothing else has really changed. Obviously I'm on the, the antibiotics and stuff like that. And I'm kind of run down and sleeping a bit more and stuff like that. But yeah, like, so weird. So, so weird. 
I'll be interested interested to see if that continues. And, and now because we're talking about it, I'm going to go up to bed in a couple of hours and be like, my my brain's going to be sitting there. Here's Come on, Brian. Let's Here's go. Another one. Here's another one. <laughs> um, I think we're coming up on time, so we're going to start wrapping up. But before we do, I want to ask you, what was that thing you were, wanted to talk about about that you find difficult to talk about? Because I remembered to write it down. Yeah, so if you want to wrap it up, that's not a conversation for now. That's a conversation for a different episode. Oh. We can do it. Let's, let's say we're going to do that directly on the next episode because I know you're going to have a lot of input on this topic as well. Okay. So next episode, uh, we will we'll discuss that. Okay, um, and we'll. Talk. You're going to need to give me what that topic is going to be, and I promise I won't ask you about it off camera. Um, but you'll need to give me what the topic is, so I remember to then bring it back for our next episode. Yeah, I'll tell you as soon as we get off this. <laughs> You're a bollocks. Um, okay, no worries. I agree. Um, fair. I don't agree, but I have to agree because it's your choice. So yeah, that is that's everything for this episode i've been stephen you've been harv and it's been an absolute wonder a treat a joy and a pleasure um feel free to like comment subscribe please please subscribe and <laughs> i forgot about that we need to get oh, the counter i will oh, never God. forget about that until it happens and the thing is when it happens there's going to be another goal um and well, you know what when i'm editing this uh tonight well no what time is it when i'm editing this tomorrow i'm gonna put in uh, a little counter thingy <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah and i'm gonna God. start encouraging people not to subscribe no no no, <laughs> imagine, no, 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 no. imagine we got to like 2400 or something 249 there at the laptop the whole day kind of refreshing 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 <laughs> looking oh, up like stop. bot farms to subscribe yeah. Uh, yeah so like comment subscribe give us any feedback and um, we are hoping that when this episode comes out that we're gonna have something fun and new to try that same day we don't know if it's actually going to happen yet but wait and see and it is it gonna is, happen it is gonna happen and we're gonna click it right now because we're gonna yeah. do it directly after this episode comes out so we're gonna start uh streaming on twitch and eventually youtube whenever mm -hmm. oh, we can do that now right we oh yeah that 24 hour pass so we can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we're going to start streaming on twitch and youtube and maybe other places i don't know and we're going to play some games some yep. video games i'm going to start off with minecraft because steven's a complete noob and he needs some help so we're going to set up a server and get some mining done mining and crafting i can build a four by four house and I can get my iron tools, and that's as far as I go. And I know there's more to it. And Harv's going to take me by the hand and guide me through that wonderful world of mining and crafting. I am so excited to see how shit you are. <laughs> I watching your face there when I said take you by, or you're going to take me by the hand. I saw you go, oh Jesus, what's he going to say here? Um, and then you said the wonderful world of mining and crafting. Did you know? Do you know where that's from? No. So there's this huge YouTuber. He's called Good Times with Scar. Fantastic, fantastic YouTuber. Look, we're going to have to tag him in this now. Um, and he's he's just a, a great guy. He uh, does the most amazing builds, like so creative, like huge. On his latest, um, I've gone off on a bloody tangent now, but I'm like so so passionate about Minecraft and specifically this server Her Hermitcraft. And I follow all of the people on on Hermitcraft, but um, he in the, in the most recent season he built his own theme park. Okay. This wow. is just mind blown, right? Built his own theme park, had all the like based on Disney, had all the little shops, you know, similar layouts, big castle, ideas for rides and all this stuff. And he, he is so beloved by the community, and his builds and his energy are just so beloved by the community that like sixty artists came together and developed a digital book, a digital art book based on his designs of this Scarland. It was Scarland or Scarlandia, I can't remember. But uh, 
they they made this digital book and I'll it can be downloaded for free. I'll link it in the comments or the description. <clears throat> Unbelievable. He did a video where he went through the book itself. They actually started to develop a print version of the book and that all the proceeds go to a kid's charity or something. It's unbelievable. That is incredible. Now I can talk to But him. anyway, sorry, he, that's, that's where, uh, like when you said that, I was like, oh, tweak, because he always says that he says, welcome to the wonder. He's got a real deep voice, lovely voice to listen to. Welcome to the wonderful world of mining and crafting. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I have zero experience with like the stream world or the content world of Minecraft. So that, that was just my brain. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can beat his, his uh, theme park. So when I was playing Minecraft, I have like maybe a very big five hours in total that I've put into Minecraft. <laughs> um, but when I was playing it, I built and I'd like take a breath. This is real. Really? On my house, I had a copper roof. Whoa. Now, there you go. Copper blocks on my roof. That was like, I know, that's... That must it have was, hurt. It did. It took quite some time. It took me about 30 minutes. And that most of that was just figuring out how to actually place the blocks in the way I wanted them. Um, so tune in for that and more. That chaos and madness. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing that hopefully on Wednesday. Yeah, what time are we doing that on Wednesday? 9 p.m. Irish time. 9 p.m. Irish time. Okay, perfect. We'll link uh, when we're posting the episode. We'll say that. So 9 p.m. Irish, which is 1 p.m. Pacific, which is 4 p.m. East Coast. Nice. Okay, let's wrap her up. On that, day day. Bye.